created evil, but the times were different. Slaves were considered property, often listed along with the household furniture in the ledgers of Jefferson's Monticello or Washington's Mount Vernon. Estimates vary, but between one third and one half of the signers owned slaves. Some freed their slaves after the signers. Some thought that slavery was on the way out and would soon die off of its own accord. Others saw slavery as an economic necessity and clung to it tenaciously. Some found themselves in the horns of a dilemma. Down one way or down the other, with personal values in conflict. Thomas Jefferson wrote to a friend. As it is, we have the wolf by the ear, and we can neither hold them nor safely let him go. Justice is in one scale and self-preservation in the other. Though allowing you as a king, consequently the issue of rights for others was left for future generations to address and resolve. Our forefathers were just like us. Human beings made of the same stuff we are, sharing the same hopes and dreams for themselves and their families. They were flesh and blood men with inadequacies and hypocrisies. But in the end, when called upon to muster incredible resources of courage, they stepped up, raised the pen, and risked their liberty in their lives for signature on a piece of paper. Most of these men are unsung heroes who, like most of us, were fellow human beings. But they aspired to values that were very dear to them. Values for which they were laying their very lives on the line. I owe no allegiance to the king of the Let the British be warned that there will be an obstinate, awful, and tremendous war. I am on fire for religious freedom. The best and most glorious cause. The gun and the bayonet alone will finish the contest in which we are engaged. All power, all power is derived from the people. And the true American dream, they pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to each other and their country, and affix their names to a single piece of parchment, the Declaration of Independence, that changed the course of human history. And this is the gentleman, Chris Orr, who's uh, in charge of the, our founding fathers. So and he's going to tell us about where it's located and everything. And uh, it's a very nice exhibit. You're gonna, I already got the video in here. That's going on YouTube. So where, where is this location? We are in Rapid City, South Dakota, just south of Rapid City, just south of Reptile Gardens, if you know where that is. And uh, the, you can't miss it. It looks like Independence Hall. Yes. And uh, we have the Liberty Bell out front as well. Yes, it's very nice. And the uh, exhibit inside is the picture here. Yeah. The, the picture. Uh, John Trumbull's uh, painting. Right. And we've made it into life-size statues. Yeah, so. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And the history of all the men's in there. They got portraits and the history there. Yep, we give a yeah. little bit of history and yes. then uh, what they had to go through right. uh, when they signed the document, uh, the declaration, the committed treason. Yes, it's very nice. Well, that was it. And I'm going to ring the Liberty Bell outside. Yep. So I'm going to do that now. And you can ring it as many times as you want. Okay. Just remember it's loud. 
Great, let's hear it. I'll be right back in here. And this is the Liberty Bell. And this ends my video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I'm getting better on making these videos. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll talk to you in the near future, next place I go to. Thank you. One more bell. One more bell time.